This is where the Ukrainian military tells us they're seizing back their lands. But on the battered southern front with Russia, the stalemate of trench warfare seems to be setting in. And commanders privately admit advances by either side here are small. The Russians seem to be running out of ammunition and they're not as strong as they were, the platoon commander of this forward trench told me. But we need more weapons too, he adds, if we're to push ahead. I'm speaking to Anton here and he's saying it is it is very loud at night. It's not Right, so in, in, in the morning he's saying it's, it's not so noisy, it's a bit quieter. So uh, it's interesting because this is the place where the Ukrainian government say there's a big counter-offensive that's been underway for some time and they're taking back territory. But we've not seen a great deal of evidence of that on the ground. It seems that... You know, both sides dug in here heavily, have fought themselves to a standstill. Neither side strong enough to win this war, but not weak enough to lose it either. Oh, that's outgoing, is it? You sure? They can hear the outgoing artillery shells streaming across our position here. Our Ukrainian military escorts take us to what they say is a recently liberated zone, where at least 30 Russians holed up inside this kindergarten were killed. As Moscow focuses its forces on Donbass in the east, Ukrainian officials say conquered areas in the south, like this, are being left exposed. All right, well... They brought to this very forward location where, as you can hear, there are still um, artillery exchanges uh, taking place. And this is the remnants of a battle from a couple of weeks ago, they say, where um, this Russian position was taken by Ukrainian forces at great cost, both to the Ukrainians and obviously uh, to the Russians as well. All of this debris on the ground is, we're told, Russian equipment. And obviously this is the remnants of a Russian, a Russian armoured vehicle of some kind, which has been, like so many we've seen, totally destroyed in this bitter conflict. The Russians thought that they were going to win easily, didn't yes, they? Yes, yes. But that's not what's happening. Of course, a uh, Russian uh, thought uh, a few days finished war in Ukraine. We can, in a few days. We can hear it's still going yes, on now. it's shell and we can hear a um, flight of shell. Yeah, uh, months later. Russian, uh, Russian government planned to uh, have victory in a few days. I think uh, we must be ready to a long war. A long artillery war, with heavy weapons like this Ukrainian battle tank positioned in tree lines towards an unseen enemy. These firing points quickly become vulnerable and the troops here need to be mobile. OK, well, we've been brought to this frontline position where they're going to fire on Russian forces a short distance away. It's a secret location. We can only stay for one round, we're told. After that, there's going to be return fire and we've got to get out of here. But this is what we've been brought to see. Goodness me. OK, guys, what now? Another one. I thought we had to go after one. Once more again. One more again. Seconds later, another bone-shaking round hurtles towards Russian positions. OK, we've got to go now. Come on. And we quickly leave Ukraine's grinding front lines behind. Jake, uh, shortly after uh, we fled that location, we did see a shell incoming into approximately the location uh, where we were. Underlines that even though this frontline position does look quite static, a bit like you know, reminiscent of World War I trench warfare, it is in fact still a very dangerous place. Jake. 